Hello, and welcome to a new Vector Toots screencast. My name is Sean Hodge, and I'll be taking you through the tutorial. I recently wrote how to create an hourglass icon in about an hour. In this, in this tutorial, we'll be using simple shapes, gradients, and vector textures to create an hourglass icon. I'll be demonstrating these techniques in Illustrator CS4. For all you Vector Plus members, be sure to download the tutorial by going to tootsplus.com. After you, you've reviewed the included files, we'll be ready to begin. And for those of you without Plus accounts, you're welcome to follow along as well. To begin, let's first take a look at what we'll be creating. You can see the final image here. Um, it's a little bit bigger than what you'd like to use an icon at, but works well for the tutorial tutorial purposes. See, I also show the icon at, at different sizes here. Over on the down here is probably the size that you'd you'd use it at. Really depends on your purposes though. Um, over on the left is the textured version, and on the right is the non-textured version, so you can compare the differences, see which style that you'd be more interested in using for whatever project you had in mind. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and set up our document. Go to File, New. I'm sending up 600 pixels. by 600 pixels. Um, I basically started with the web profile for this. You could go ahead and use whatever you want though. And after selecting the web profile, just change the width and height. And name it hourglass icon. And click OK. Command 1 to center the document. And let's go ahead and set up our preferences. Go to Illustrator Preferences, Guides and Grid. And I just changed the color to a light blue for the guides. And I set the grid lines for every 10 pixels with only one subdivision. So basically there's, there's a line every 10 pixels, which makes it easy to work with. Hit OK. Then click on View and you want to turn on snap to grid and show grid grab the ellipse tool just hit L on the keyboard and click anywhere on your document to open up the settings and for width it's 200 pixels and height 200 pixels and click OK Hit Command X and then Command B, which will place it in the center. Now grab the direct selection tool by hitting A on the keyboard. Go ahead and just select the bottom point. Click one, two, three times. And then hold Shift to constrain this. Actually, it really doesn't matter. Just drag it all the way into the point. And then you're left with a, a kind of upside down teardrop shape. Hold down the Option or Alt key and drag a copy off so that we'll be able to use this later. Just make sure it's off, off to the side of the artboard. And I'm just finding somewhere to, to place. Save document real quick. moving this up a little bit and holding shift to constrain then select the option and drag a copy down until it overlaps the tip hit R to grab the rotate tool hold down shift to constrain and just twist it around until it moves about 180 degrees and these two points are facing each other with both of these selected just looking for pathfinder tool um, go ahead and click on Unite, and that makes it just one, one shape, one solid shape. Go ahead and hit L to grab the ellipse, ellipse tool. Click anywhere on the keyboard, and we're gonna make 
an ellipse that's 280 pixels wide by 60 pixels tall. I click OK. I go ahead and hit Command X, Command B, paste it in the center, hold Shift to constrain, and just drag it up until the center point is at the top of um, our glass shape. Then hit Command C and Command B to place them back, and hit the down arrow key three times which moves it 30 pixels down. Hit M to grab the rectangle tool, and then from the center point of the top ellipse to the center point of the bottom ellipse, we're just drawing a rectangle, and that works out to be, oops, didn't do that right. There we go, that works out to be uh, See it up here, 280 by 30 pixels. Go ahead, hit Command X, select the bottom ellipse, hit Command F. That places it in front of this bottom one, but behind the top one. Now, make sure that that rectangle and the bottom ellipse are selected. Open up our Pathfinder tool, and go ahead and click on Unite. Go ahead and go ahead and group this, these shapes. Hold down the Option and Alt key and drag a copy down until it rests over the bottom of the glass shape. Then hit Command X, Command B, which places it in back. I'm just going to change the shape of the glass shape slightly by selecting the bottommost point. You hit A to grab the direct select tool, and then just click up once. Just save in the document as well. Go ahead and select the, the bottom shapes here, and stretch it up a little bit until it's 110 pixels tall. And grab the glass, and just click the, the top arrow key once, the up arrow key once. I'll grab the rounded rectangle tool, click anywhere on the keyboard, and we're gonna make we're gonna make the bars, the vertical bars for our hourglass icon, and make it 20 pixels wide by 390 pixels tall and a corner radius of six pixels and click OK. And then go ahead and just align it. It snaps to the grid, so it's pretty easy to move around. I just cut that, Command X, selected the this top shape, top group, and then hit Command plus B to place it behind it. So this rests above. And I'm dragging, alt dragging, and holding shift to constrain. Copy over. And now I'm just gonna align it a little bit. I'm gonna hold sh shift, command, and the quotes, which turns off the, um, what is it called? You also go to view, snap to grid, so it turns off snap to grid. So I can align this. I'm just hitting the up arrow key a little bit to get this where I want it. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, grabbing that, and just moving it up a little bit. Hit Command 1. Um, go ahead and hit Shift, Command, and then the quote key again, turns our snap to grid back on, hold down option, and drag another copy off. And then hit Command X, Command B, places it behind our document. I mean, technically it should rest above this, you could select this and hit Command F, but it really doesn't matter, because we're not making the glass see all the way through to that. Hit L, or first Z, zoom in, then L, to grab our ellipse tool. And we want this to be 20 pixels wide. And it's 10 pixels tall. And go ahead and drag a copy down by holding uh, the Alt Option key and just dragging a copy off. Hold Shift, Command, 
and then hit the quotes button. And we're just moving this. And command X to cut it, command select the top one, and then command B to place it in, to put it in place. We're just gonna eyeball this. Actually, you know what? Turn the snap to grid back on. That way we make sure this is 20 pixels. Now I'll turn it back off again. And then we're gonna eyeball this. You want the center of this to line up with the bottom and the center of this ellipse to line up with the top of the rectangle. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and select the top one, hit Command X, Command F to place in front. And then these two select the rectangle and then the bottom ellipse. Go ahead and hit Unite in the Pathfinder key. And then select both the, the shapes and hit group. Then command one. And we'll zoom back in just a little bit. Then drag a copy off. Let's turn snap to grid back on, which is command, shift, and then hit the quote key again. Now it's snapping. And drag another copy off. This just makes sure that it's it's aligned. And then I'm just turning it off again. So I can position it the way that I want. I'm holding shift to constrain this. And this is looking pretty good. You can always manipulate this a bit later on as well. Hit command one, save document. Hold down the option alt key and just drag off a copy um, of this upside down teardrop shape. Make sure our snap to grid is turned on. Hit Z to grab the zoom tool, zoomed in. Now I'm grabbing the rectangle tool and surrounding it, the rectangle shape. See how this is going to cut it. Go ahead and grab the Pathfinder palette. And I always forget which one is going to. It was minus front. No. No. <laughs> this is pissing me off. Uh, I'm just going to click divide which is what I usually do, because I always forget what these different Pathfinder options do. And then you can see I deleted the excess. And then go to Object. After selecting both the shapes, go to Object and Group. Zoom in back out a little bit. And Command minus to, to pull back a little bit. Just want to show that, that we're keeping one of these shapes. To use later and that these aren't connected anymore because we broke it apart and ungrouped it. Go ahead and save. Hit command one to center the document. Select this shape. Hit command C, command V, places it in the middle of our document. Hold shift to constrain. Just move that up. Use the arrow keys from there if you need to. Make sure snap to grid is turned on. Grab the zoom tool, just Z, and then zoomed in. Now I hit A, grab the direct selection tool. And I'm just using the arrow key to move it over one. Which looks cool, which looks good. Hit Command 1, and then Command S to save. Grab this top shape, hit Command C, Command V, Hit R to grab the rotate tool, hold shift to constrain, and we're just rotating at 180 degrees. And then I'm dragging this down. I'll select the bottom point, just move it up a few pixels, 
actually not just a few pixels, 10 pixels is what it'll jump to. Moving that down, and basically what we want this to do is kind of match the spacing here. We want this lower shape to match the spacing, spacing up top. Um, hit A to grab the direct selection tool. And I'm moving these over a bit. With the arrow keys. And you can see it's a bit too wide here. So what I'm going to do is the direct selection tool, grab this. I'm going to turn off the snap to grid by hitting command, shift, and then the quotes. And then with the arrow keys, um, you want to remember how many times you bump it over because you want to match it on the other side. So I've moved it a couple times and move this one one couple times that way. So just do the opposite over here. It's looking a little bit better. Doesn't have to be perfect either. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag this in. Actually, you know what? Let's turn the snap to grid back on. And I just moved it 10 pixels down. Want to smooth this a little bit. Turn the snap to grid off. Dragging this handle in. See that smooths it out a little bit. Just try to match it as close as possible over here. Zooming in. Make sure this point goes all the way in. In command one. And that's pretty close. You could always adjust it further if you wanted to. Hit L to grab the ellipse tool. Yeah. Just checking to see if the snap to grid is on. Hit Command Shift quotes to turn the snap to grid on. Zoom in a bit. Hit L to grab the ellipse tool. You can see that's 180 pixels wide by 40 pixels tall. Hold down the Option Alt key and just drag or copy off. Turn off Snap to Grid. We're going to have to do this, this manually. Hold down Shift to constrain this. And then, whoops. Just want to make sure that this matches that point. So you know what that is on a point. So go ahead and turn snap to grid on. And we'll snap right to it. Just depends on where you put that. Got the direct selection tool. software update is bugging me. Not now. Go ahead and save this. And now we're going to add some points here. We need to make sure that the snap to grid is turned off. Hit the plus key. Actually first select this. Then hit the plus key. If you want to, you could actually hit command R. Turn on some Rulers, you want to make sure that these are as close to um, horizontally aligned as possible. And we're just going to create a couple points. You can always adjust these later as well. So I went ahead and did that. And I don't need this guide anymore. So I'm just going to go to View, Guides, Clear Guides. 
hit A to grab the actually command minus key to zoom back a little bit then hit A to grab the direct selection tool hold shift to constrain and then just pull this down to around the center of uh, this bottom shape go ahead and select both the bottom sand shapes hit command X select this top sand shape and then command E which aligns everything uh, hit command 1 let's pull out the layers pull out the layers palette name the shapes and we're going to create a new one called colors select all by hitting command A and then command C to copy go ahead and lock the shapes layer and turn it off now select color and hit command F now we're ready to work on on that layer. Basically we're just saving a copy because we've got our main shape created at this point. All right, if you're following along with the tutorial, uh, with the written tutorial, we're on step 10 and what we're going to do next is apply a steel gradient. So let's go ahead and you can click here in, in the swatches, swatch libraries menu, or you can click on the, the top right arrow here go to open swatches library gradients and then metals and to start with we just go ahead and select all the areas that are going to be metal And then just click on steel. Do that again. So also, also remove the stroke. There we go. Now let's also open the, the gradient. The gradient palette. So we're gonna go ahead and, and you can see right now that this doesn't have any level of realism really, except for the bars. And we're just going to adjust these gradients. We may not match the tutorial exactly here, but I'll try to get it close. Changing the angle to 120, getting rid of a couple of sliders. Uh, this is for the top ellipse. Uh, and also you don't have to match the tutorial exactly, just do what, what looks right. What's important though is to keep certain areas going in the, the same direction and having a, a similar gradient to keep some consistency. And for this side shape, um, for the side of this top, changing the angle to 180. Now let's zoom in. Changing that to 60 and go ahead and adjust how you see fit. And this one's going to be 180. Turn it down just a little bit. Looks good enough. And go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Command minus key. Select both these tops, then hit I to grab the eyedropper tool. Select both those, it grabs the gradient. Then go ahead and change the angle to 60. We're going to do the same thing with this bottom part. Hit I, the eyedropper tool. Select that, and this time hit 180. Go ahead and click down in, in the Swatches Library menu button down the bottom left. Go to Gradients and we're looking for Water. Select the glass area. 
remove the stroke, and apply water 5. Click on the swatches library middle again, go to gradients, and this time we'll select earth tones. Select both the top ellipses of the sand area, and click on earth tone 5, set the angle to 60 for the gradient, remove the stroke, select the bottom shapes, and apply earth tone 4, set the angle to 120, Go ahead and save it. I'm going to just make a few adjustments here. <coughs> Hit Z to grab the zoom tool. Hit A to grab the direct selection tool. And I'm selecting this point. Basically, we want to just widen it a little bit here. So I'm hitting twice after selecting the point, um, first right and then left, which winds us out a little bit as it goes through here. Just makes a, a really subtle difference. Go ahead and select the, all the shapes here, the sand and glass. And we want to make a little bit of room down at the bottom to add some shading. So go ahead and just move it up a little bit. I'm moving that bar up a little bit as well so it doesn't get in the way. Go ahead and select this bottom ellipse, hit Command C, and then Command F to place it in front. Go ahead and scale it down a bit and position it as shown. And for the gradient, I want to change it to radial. Go ahead and grab the eyedropper tool to copy a gradient to kind of get the basic colors that we've been working with, which are basically just gray. And just change it so it's just a, a two-stop gradient. We'll set to radial. See, it's a fairly dark gradient. Actually, I want, actually I want the colors to go the opposite direction. Okay, looks good. Whatever looks good to you here. Um, hitting Command minus to zoom out, making a copy, placing it behind one of these. See how that looks. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, hold, hold the option key down. I can select it. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Just drag a copy off. making a few adjustments here. Give it a little more room for the shade. Yeah, it looks good.
go ahead and select this shape, drag a copy over uh, by holding Alt, drag another copy and hold Shift and Option. Just make this a little bit bigger so we can get some overlap. I'm going to just copy this whole thing just to, I guess I need to reposition it a little bit. Open the Pathfinder palette, hit minus front. Command X, Command F, place it in front. Uh, that looks pretty good. Select this shape, Command X, Command F to place it in front. Grab the eyedropper tool and change it to the same color. Merge, yep, merge. Merge looks good. Command X, Command F. Select them both. And then we want to hit minus front again. You can go ahead and delete these shapes now. Go ahead and make a new layer, call it Highlights. Um, I select and hit Command X, the highlight we just made, lock in the color layer for now, and hitting Command F, to drop it into the Highlights layer. Zoom in a little bit, hit M to grab a, the rectangle tool. I'll draw a little rectangle here. Hit A to grab the direct selection tool. And now we're just adjusting the points a little bit here so that it appears to, to follow the, the curve of the glass. Now select this highlight shape, hold down option, and drag a copy off. Then you go object, transform, reflect, have it set to horizontal, and hit OK. Now go ahead and just stretch it however you see fit. I'm, I'm going to make just a, some minor modifications, just rotating it a bit, stretching it a bit. Zoom in here. You want to make sure that this bottom point overlaps. Let's unlock the color layer. You want to make sure it overlaps this shape. Um, after selecting this sand shape, hit Command C. Select this shape, hit Command F. And make sure they're both selected. And go ahead and hit Divide. Delete these shapes, select these two, hit merge. And then we can just remove the strokes of all these all these shapes. All right now we're going to adjust these gradients. And we also want to adjust the transparency. So I'm just getting those palettes ready. Go ahead and select this shape. 
Now this is probably not going to match the tutorial, but I'll do the best I can with it. Okay, looks like you got to open up. You can hit zero if you want to add transparency. So you can use white gradient, and then you can just adjust the transparency, the opacity of the the slider itself. Just so cool. <laughs> this is something I always wish Illustrator could do, and now it can. Um, and once you're satisfied with that, let's move on to the next. I'm just applying a similar, similar gradient here. This time I want, I'll, I'll go ahead and put two transparent stops to see how that looks. And I'll change it to 180 here. Yeah, 60 looks good. I'm basically just moving it away from this edge a little bit. And then here, just changing the opacity to 20 and not worrying about any um, transparent gradients. Now if you want this a little brighter, you just give it less opacity. I'll turn it up to, to 60. And I'll put this one at 40 for now. And just do whatever you think is best. Whatever you think looks best. Go ahead and save the document. Now you could stop here if you wanted to. If this is what what you the outcome that you're looking for, the style, um, this kind of shiny gradient style. Um, if you want to add some texture though, I'm going to go ahead and, and do that now. Go ahead and click this button in the bottom of the swatches palette. Go to Patterns, Basic Graphics, Basic Graphic Textures, that's it. And then we also want the Transparency Palette. We'll start at the top. With this ellipse shape selected, hit Command C, Command F, and we'll be applying the burlap texture to it. See that that's a bit too harsh, so uh, we want to go ahead and set it to. I think it's color burn. If you're following along in the tutorial, we're at um, step 19 right now. Drop it down to 15%. I just did the same thing. Um, Command C, Command F, applying the burlap pattern to it. Just gonna check what what the uh, what transparency is being used here in the screen. So go ahead and set this to screen. You also experiment and see if you like. Uh, other transparency effects better for for this. Selecting these bars, hit Command C, Command F. Um, actually, this one you want to do separately. Press it into confirm. Now, with all these selected, we're just going to apply the same burlap texture, color burn. So it's a 15%. And then because this one's in the background, it's just a simple way to just send it at 10%. So it's just a little bit faded back there. And grab the eyedropper tool. First hit Command C, Command F, and then grab the eyedropper tool. And just applying the same, same texture to it. Command C, Command F, 
and I don't have the tool doing the same thing here. You see it comes in at the same transparency in effect. Command C, Command F, and also grabs the texture. And let's set this transparency to darken. Go ahead and hit it. turn off the grid and command S for save. Sorry there was some background noise there for a little while. I think the fan on my computer turned on. So I'm just selecting the top caps, top ellipses on them. Hit Command C, Command F. Just selecting this texture, but I want to turn this to, let's try color dodge. Just try doing it just one at a time. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'll just turn the opacity down a bit. See, it's not super noticeable, but it does make a slight difference. Just making sure to apply it to each one of these. Go ahead and select the glass, hit Command C, and you want to make sure that this goes above the sand. So hit Command. Actually, no, you know what? Let's do the sand first. Select both the sands, and we're looking for USGS 17 Sand Dry. So I know it's in here. There it is. First hit Command C, Command F, so there's a copy, then go ahead and apply that. And we're going to set the, it to luminosity. Go ahead and grab both these, hit Command C, Command F. Actually, we'll have to do them separately. Command C, Command F, Command C, Command F, and select both. And this time it's going to be set to overlay and USGS 17A shifting sands. There we go. That just makes the top and bottom a little bit different. Now go ahead and select the glass area and command C. Select all the sands so it's going to go directly on top of that. Hit command F. Um, if that happens, <laughs> which has happened to me, happens to you, just select these shapes, hit command. Make sure we get everybody in here. Having a tough time selecting this, probably because some shapes are grouped strangely. Let's try this command X. Let's try 
try this another way. Lock these down. Grab everybody. Hit Command X. Make sure everything's locked down. Grab everybody. Hit Command X. Miss something. Select this and hit Command B. That worked. I placed it behind this shape. Um, this is why people say you should take better care with your layers, which I didn't to a certain extent here. I'll go ahead and hit Command, select the glass, hit Command C, then select the sand shapes, and then hit Command F, which places it in front of those. And the texture here is intricate surface screen. Let's try to find that. There it is, intricate surface screen, and then set it to screen. There we go, that really gives some some texture to everything. And we're almost done here. Make sure the snap to grid is on. Hit M, hold down shift, constrain, and just drag a, a square across the artboard. Command X, and what we're gonna do is Add a new layer, just drop it behind everything, and name it background, and then hit Command F or Command B. And I'm just going to change the color there. Uh, what we want is a radial gradient, so apply to a radial gradient, so open up the gradients. So it has a radial, and then for the center color is white, and the outer color just make a, a light gray. I just selected one from the swatch panel. Just open in the transparency panel. Hit L to grab the ellipse tool. Draw an ellipse, and place it in front of the background. want the transparency to go from white to black. I think it's black to white actually. Yeah, black to white. Go ahead and hit darken. And I'm trying to grab this slider right here. There we go. Actually, I remember now. I can't believe I forgot this. You got to draw a circle and then squish it down into an ellipse. That makes it all even. You see that? I've shown this a bunch of times in different tutorials. And then set it to darken. There we go. Let me close these layers because we're all set. I'm not going to delete these, I'm just going to move them out of the way. Go ahead and hit Command S and, and we're done. Our final Im image is complete. So a lot you can do with Illustrator, even if you aren't great at drawing or, or haven't mastered the pen tool yet. Just keep at it and make the best of the tools you feel comfortable comfortable with. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have fun applying these real, relatively simple techniques to create your own hourglass icons. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next Vector Toots screencast. Vector Toots Plus screencast.